Hi, welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. I'm Lisa Kimura. I'm the host of Family Affairs. Here to talk about all of the programs, the policies, and the information that help make Hawaii a safer, happier, healthier place for families. With me today, I have a couple of guests to talk about a really important program for new moms, Liana Lam and Elise Inoue. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Liana, tell me a little bit about how Pico Pals began. What oh. is Pico Pals? What is Pico Pals? Pico Pals is a new parent support program uh, that connects and it builds community. Um, it also, I don't know, um, it just, it, yeah. 12 weeks of new thank parent you, support. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yes, it offers, it's a program with 12 weeks of new parent support. Um, we meet every week for two hours and we slowly help facilitate and build relationships and um, our group leaders also mentor the new parents and, and just kind of normalize everything as they transition. And it's not only specific to moms, it's also just all new parents. So we also have fathers involved as well. Would you say that it's a support group or what kind of, what oh, kind of setting is it? You know, it's not officially a support group, but everybody finds so much support through the friendship and the community building. I think of it more as just holding space for connection um, because new parenthood can be really, really isolating. And so there's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of friendship, a lot of rallying and encouraging that kind of helps people get over that hump. And as I guess since we have a lot of facilitated discussion um, about all things that new parents go through, it just people find a lot of things in common with each other and a lot of connection and um, yeah and through that we have uh, I guess organically there ends up being a lot of support but I wouldn't say it's like support with a therapist sure. or a counselor specifically but as you and I know we both find support through friendship yeah absolutely yeah it's a program offered through Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies and there's a variety of topics that um, are discussed what kinds of things come up for people or what can they expect in the in the setting oh um, let's see so we, some of the topics we spend time talking about would be um, feeding our baby, whether it's nursing, whether it's breastfeeding or um, bottling, like it's all accepted. Um, we talk a lot about sleep, mm. a lot about sleep throughout mm -hmm. all of the program. Totally um, universal <laughs> newborn parent absolutely. experience. Absolutely. Uh, we talk about career and balancing our family life and our work life. Um, we talk a lot about relationships with our partners. Um, and our extended family and child care and gosh, you name it, we talk about it. And we also create space within the two hours that we spend to just talk about whatever is going on that week. Because mm -hmm. um, you never really know what you're dealing with until you're dealing with it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So we create space for that as well. Great. We'll put some pictures up on the screen so people can see what oh, a group looks yeah. like. But Elise, what has your experience? Tell us what you've done as far as getting involved with Pico Pals. Yeah, so I joined Pico Pals as a new mommy um, and really loved it. Like you're saying, creating space, like it was just, like I found it so uh, supportive and empowering to, as a new mom to show up and see what other moms, how they get through their day and how they're managing and dealing with this whole change of your world. And so Pico Pals was just like, I looked so forward to it every Wednesday and just loved it. And I honestly don't even really remember a lot of it from, you know, because it was just like to get out of the house and to see other adults and commiserate and celebrate all these things that happen as a new mom. Um, so I was the member, you know, through that and then have now transitioned to the other side of it as a leader. Um, yeah, and I really have loved it. It's a different experience, a different way to support and create an environment for those mommies. Um, but yeah, but my original interaction with Pico Pals was using it as my way to enter the world of parenthood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And your son Austin is in some of those photos yes. that were up there. Um, how old was Austin when you guys first started? Where I are you now? I think he was four months old. So um, he wasn't the oldest baby, he wasn't the youngest baby, but he was right, right in the middle. He was the biggest baby though. <laughs> it was always the biggest. Um, but yeah, and it was great for him because I felt better supported and felt more confident for him. And then as he's gotten older and they start to interact, he's now has a, other babies his age he can, you 
know, poke around with, interact with, interact with. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. And what have you seen now becoming a group leader? What is that experience like for you? Um, it's totally, it's totally different. And um, so we had spoke when I first started. You know, it's about creating an environment where other moms can get the support. So when I was participating in as just a regular participant, it was about finding support for myself. Mm -hmm. And now it's about creating an environment where other moms can create those connections, which was a really interesting transition for me and really something that I learned a lot from. Um, and yeah, I just, I really want to create something that they can make those friendships and they can support right. each other and they can feel like they're heard and that they're not, you know, alone because it is yes. really isolating. Yeah. And there's some issues that come up or things that come up that, you know, other people just don't necessarily understand or can't, they can't understand because they haven't gone through it yet. And so being able to say like, oh, this experience has been super hard for me. How has it been for you? And letting them kind of foster that has been so nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tagline is parenting with aloha together. So yeah. Leanna, what does that mean exactly? Oh, um, I think of, well, I, I feel like, the new parenthood um, transition is such a sacred space for us, and it's such a beautiful place where where we're open to new ways of thinking because our whole world, you mm -hmm. said, is like turned completely upside down. And I look at that as an opportunity to teach people how to love, how to connect, and how to have or like just to live aloha mm -hmm. and just to live a lot of yeah. love. Um, and if well, and, and our group leaders, we train our group leaders to really try to facilitate and hold this space and celebrate the diversity, celebrate everyone's voice, encourage moms to trust their own intuition and, and all of, I mean, I could go on about that, but it's, um, so, so because of that, like, it just creates a really nice environment to cultivate love and aloha. I think, um, well, and of course, the idea of togetherness, connection, community. It's a 12-week program, but um, all of our group leaders know that in the beginning, the very first week, everyone's really nervous. Mm -hmm. and, and we kind of, it's human nature just to feel like in, the other in mm -hmm. a new situation. And you kind of size up people. And, yeah. and automatically, you'll see, like, what do you have in common? What is different? And then as the weeks progress and people keep showing up and the layers just keep getting peeled away, mm -hmm. And um, you start seeing people acknowledge in each other's experience, like, oh, my baby did that too, or mm -hmm. oh, my husband's driving me crazy, or, <laughs> or like, oh, my wife worries about that as well. And then slowly you see the, the group, or just the connection start to form, and the relationship getting deeper and deeper, and it's so beautiful. Um, so I really feel like, so back to that, that um, our, our saying of learning to parent with aloha together, it's, it's all of that. There's yeah, aloha yeah. and then the togetherness. Oh, and also that you get to see other people's ways of doing. Yeah, and yeah. you also realize that your initial judgments or just preconceived notions yeah. about people were totally off. Mm -hmm. And then that lesson becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. So that when you meet people from, like just a stranger, you might have a certain thought, but you know you could be completely off. Yeah. And what you see now is a result of some long journey that they've had of all these experiences. Mm -hmm. So it can actually get kind of kind of deep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and life changing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it also provides a lot of support for those sleepless nights where you're just trying to get out of the house. Yes. There's the camaraderie. Yeah. You made it. You had a screaming baby <laughs> in your car, and you still yeah. made it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so all of that's there, and it's very beautiful as a group leader to yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Let's talk a little bit about what that isolation factor feels like for new oh, parents. Yeah. Can you at least describe that situation for yourself? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple things. One, you're just physically so exhausted, and you're, what, however your delivery went, you know, there's all this that comes with it. And so you feel uncomfortable stepping outside sometimes. You don't, your body isn't what it was before. Mm -hmm. You just, you don't know how to dress yourself. There's that aspect. And then there's the other aspect of, you know, you know, you hear all this stuff about, should you take your baby out? Should you not? Should you do this? Should you not? And so you get some anxiety about leaving your house mm -hmm. to some extent. And so I know some moms, the first meeting for PicoPal is the first time they've gone out by themselves other it's than a, a doctor deal. appointment, yes. which is 
you know, a, a really big deal for them. And for them to come out and see that other moms are out is very empowering for them to be able to like, okay, I can leave my house little steps at a time. And that's so important, not just for you, but for baby. And so, you know, but, but yeah, it's, there's so many things physically, emotionally that are keeping you at home and you just, you know, you're just trying to get one day at a time, right? And so this just gives you another thing to look forward to and opportunity to see other people doing it. Um, but yeah, there's so many, and people have different experiences. You know, some people feel really isolated because they're trying to breastfeed and they can't and they feel bad about that or they're bottle feeding and they're worried about being judged or they're trying to breastfeed in public and they're worried about being judged for that. So this creates an environment where it's like a kind of a baby step out into mm -hmm. the rest of the world yeah. um, for some women because it is, they don't quite feel comfortable in their own skin sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found... For my, some of my mommies coming out, I was so happy to hear that this is our first time, but we feel really good after it. I'm like, oh, that's great. Oh. You know, like, that's so wonderful. Now, you know, they feel more confident each time. Yeah. Leanna, what kinds of changes do you tend to see with your groups? Oh, gosh. The same kind of confidence. There's definitely a lot of um, uncertainty mm -hmm. and, like, uh, yeah, not not as confident in the beginning, and then as time goes by, and they everybody just encourages each other. It's like in the beginning, it's me, and I model it, and that's partially not because other people aren't capable; they're just they're just uncomfortable themselves. And then we realize we're all kind of nervous, and mm -hmm. we just acknowledge it. And then with the camaraderie, they all start supporting each other, and it becomes so beautiful. Um, because new parenting is super isolated. When I had our first, and I, I guess I didn't really answer your question because I was a little nervous about um, this whole think tech thing, <laughs> but um, why we founded it. And it was because, um, at least, I, I felt really passionate about it because I did not have a group with my first child. And um, I lived in Kanuhi, and, and you would think that because I'm local, I'm like fifth generation, grown yeah. up in Hawaii, my parents are still here. You'd think I have an advantage. I went to high school here, I have my high school pals, deep bonds with these people, but they're all working right now. And at mm -hmm. the time, none of them had children. And so they were busy living their childless lives, which there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. They just don't know it's what it's life, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when I would talk to them about things, they just couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. And um, we keep mentioning the word connection and relationships. And I, I just had a hard time connecting with people. And it just made me feel a little bit more crazy. Even with my longtime best friends, it's just, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took me a really long time to, find, to, to build my own group of moms, my, my own group of supportive moms. And I felt so fortunate because I'm pretty extroverted mm -hmm. and I'm very friendly. Mm -hmm. And I would think, Man, if it's taken me like a whole year to build this and then some, what about everybody else? Yeah. And then when you see how beautiful the, the strength of, of relationship is mm -hmm. and the power of community, you're like, oh, we need this for everyone. So with our second, um, and then that's when I met the other co-founders because we were all in yeah. uh, something similar to a, a Pico Palace group at the time. Um, not as intentional, but in the same sense where we held space for yeah. each other and we got to experience it. And once you, I, I, it's kind of like this like secret sauce of community. <laughs> like once you experience that level yeah. of connection, it's, it's so magical. And it's like, how, how do we bring this experience to other people? Absolutely. Because if I was feeling isolated under my conditions, like, oh man, not that I'm so amazing, sure. but I could only imagine what other people People are going through. Yes, there's so many people who moved here recently who and then have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. We're going to talk oh, about the philosophy. Okay. We're going to take a okay. quick break. Thank you. Um, uh, come back to us. I'm Lisa Kimura, host of Family Affairs, and we'll be back in just a minute. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. 
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hi, welcome back to Family Affairs on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Lisa Kimura, the host, and I'm here today with Elise Noe and Leanna Lam talking about a really transformational program for new parents called Pico Pals. So Leanna, uh, we were starting to talk a little bit about the research and, and how a program like this really helps impact people's relationships and their ability to bond with others and bond with their baby. Can you talk a little bit about that? Totally. Um, let's see. There's. There's a lot of emerging research coming out right now, especially, and they even tie it to neuroscience and like the way brain formation is going and, and the way your brain can grow. But um, there's a lot of research that's identifying this epidemic of loneliness. You probably hear a lot about, you might even feel it in your own lives. Like in the evenings, we zone out on our personal devices. You can be in bed with your partner, but not connecting out just on your device and on your yeah. device mm -hmm. until you're too tired to even connect and then you just go to sleep mm -hmm. and that's all a missed opportunity and um so a lot of um, people think that they are connected to each other digitally through facebook and whatnot but we really are not um i i've read a lot of studies yeah i'm kind of a geek like that but um one that stands out most to me is they were measuring people's levels of connection in different modes of interaction. So one was face-to-face, face, mm -hmm. which got the highest ratings. The second rating was on the phone. Mm. And I think you don't have the visual, but you still have like the intonations in your yeah. voice, mm -hmm. and you're still receiving a variety of, I guess, communication. Um, and then there was a steep drop all the way to digital communication. Mm -hmm. So you might be on a group text, even text messaging, where it's like me sending directly to you, but the buzz that you get is significantly lower than um, in person or like on the phone. So once I read that one, it's yeah. like, oh gosh, that's what Pico Pals, like I feel like Pico Pals is in response to things like that, like, like a war against loneliness, if you mm. will. But it's like, we meet face to face, two hours a week, seeing people. Um, yeah. There's also other research about friendship or even just any healthy relationship, there's three factors. It's um, positivity. Um, so you feel good when you're talking mm -hmm. with someone. And I think like in Pico Pals, we have ground rules about yeah. no judging. The group leader models that compassion, that engagement, um, just the active listening and yeah. connection. So there's positivity. Um, there's consistency and frequency. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to see the same people over and over and over again. And what's really beautiful about that is that builds trust. Mm. Because I don't know if you've ever felt where like you kind of showed up and you met somebody and then like you feel like you misspoke or you, you went off topic or you messed up in the beginning of think tech when talking <laughs> or whatever it is. Like you just feel we're human and we're awkward. Um, but if that same person continues to show up and, and they say, hey, come, come back. I want to see you again over and over and over again. You realize like, Oh, they trust me like this is a safe space they accept me um, and then the last one is intimacy um, or connection or vulnerability depending who you subscribe to but um, the idea that you can be yourself and have that super super safe place where you can say what you're thinking with without yeah. fear of judgment you can you can have courage and it's just and that's like the golden place to be so any healthy relationship has those three factors. It's the positivity, um, the frequency, consistency, and the intimacy. Mm. If you have all of that, then, then you have healthy relationships. Cool. So that's what we try to build in Pico Pals um, very intentionally, the way our curriculum is, the way we facilitate, sorry, yeah. the way we um, train our group leaders. Um, we spend a lot of time uh, showing them how to build those conditions. Fantastic.
What would you say for someone who says, ah, I have enough friends, I've got family here, I don't need a group like that? What would you say? Um, so I think it depends because it's definitely, I mean, sure, it's not for everybody. Sure. It's not like a one size fits mm -hmm. all. But um, I do think that, especially with your first pregnancy and mm -hmm. your second, because there's all these new things. I personally don't mm -hmm. know those yet, but I'm sure I will someday. Um, but it's just, you don't really, I hate to use the phrase, you don't know until it happens to you. But there are these things that you just, you know, even with your best friends who don't, like you said, who don't have children, mm -hmm. sometimes you just, they, I, I don't know, it's just they, it's this camaraderie that they just don't necessarily understand. And so, you know, I always say just give it a try and, like, be open-minded, ah, you know. Give it a try. Because um, you just, you don't know. And some people really participate, like, they, they talk a lot during the group, and that's great. They, you know, they really want to say things and get things out there. And there's some who just want to sit back and listen, and that's their connection that they're mm -hmm. building. And so you don't need to... There's not a specific person who needs to be in this group. Mm -hmm. And so I always recommend to my friends, just check it out and try it. Um, trying to be unbiased as a leader. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because there's different ways to get support out of the group. Some people yes. need a place to talk. Some people need a place to just get out of the house. Some people need a place to see other babies and let their babies see other babies. So it's, you can get different things out of it. And that's kind of what I say to people. And like I said, it's not for everybody, but I think that you can, there's more opportunity there than people realize. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's so valuable about it. You can get what you, and you, you know, if you participate, you never know what you're gonna get, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. that's what I would tell someone if they thought, mm -hmm. you know, just try it. Mm -hmm. For you, what would you say is the most, the best thing that you've gotten out of it, whether participating or now leading a group? Um, the best, I mean, I guess the support and the friendships is really the big thing that I got out of it. And knowing that how eager moms are, other parents are, to make those connections. Mm -hmm. you, so many times people are just like, you're a mom, let's be friends. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, becoming a mom, parent kind of takes that away sometimes. Like you, you don't want to like, I don't know how to say it. You don't want to like, oh, do we want to be friends? You're like... Do you want to be my friend? Because we need we need support, and so that support was what I got. And then the other thing, which is totally just me, but becoming part of this community with the Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, oh, the Pico yeah. Pals, like it really sometimes you lose. Like, what am I going to do right now? Like right now, I'm kind of working per diem, and I'm with baby a lot. And like, what am I going to do? And this just gave me a whole new community to be part of, and I like. Really, it's been really lovely for me. So that was something aside from the group that I got. But you don't know what you're going to find, yeah. you know. So for me, that was this community and the support were the, really just the best. Lovely. Yeah. Leanna, when People House first started, what kinds of things did you feel like were lacking? Like, did you look at what was out there or what was oh. the process? Wow, yeah. Um, there, I looked... <laughs> I looked a lot. <laughs> um, you know, there were there were some there were very few new new parent support groups, or I guess I shouldn't say, but like uh, like classes or anything. Like very few. It seemed like a lot of it was focused on childbirth, mm. um, the preparation for natural childbirth, and then breastfeeding, and then <laughs> breastfeeding <laughs> classes. Yeah, but then the actual and and then and then there was seemed to be a, a desert of sorts like mm -hmm. a gap and then there seemed to be classes for maybe when your kids were like six years and older about and that's more like activities let's sing with yeah. baby how do we be with baby how do we encourage baby's brain growth which is all valuable and really important but um it wasn't so much like how do you nourish the mom mm -hmm. or, or the or the parents for that matter mm -hmm. how do you how do you nourish them and support them so they can find their way and hone their parenting philosophy and learn how to trust their own intuition and instinct? And yeah, Definitely. that that um, I I do think that there are some where for, for special needs groups, very specific special needs groups that not everybody, like the average mom necessarily or average parent necessarily qualified for. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Pico Pals fills that niche. Mm -hmm. It's it's really just parenthood yeah. is universal. Um, and I know when we developed the program, we, we created financial aid supports for special populations who maybe couldn't afford um, to participate. Um, and, and I know in every group, we always have at least like one or two that we just compensate and just say, welcome in, because connection is fundamental. Mm -hmm. You kept mentioning that. Yeah. Um, 
And there's research on that too, like the whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's food, shelter, water. <laughs> but the very next one is actually love and connection. And if you don't have that, you kind of go a little bit bananas. Like, and, and we don't know, like, you, you feel it and you feel off and you think maybe I'm just sleep deprived, yeah. which is that too. Definitely and it's exactly yeah. by that. But that actually is a, a total fundamental basic mm -hmm. human need. Yeah. It mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about if someone wanted to lead a group, what is the process? What kinds of training do you do for them? Oh, so um, we invite them. Let's see. We try to, we aim for like once a month uh, or every other month. We hold a group leader training. Um, it's a couple of hours at, at Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. Um, oh, gosh. And qualifications, it's nice if you if you participate in a Pico Pals yeah. group, but it's okay if you did not. It's really anyone who is a parent or who has experience as a, as a parent, because as you know, it's, it, it's really helpful when you, when, you, when you know people's experience going into it. Um, let's see, so uh, we meet for a couple hours and then we talk about our program, the mechanics of it, but more importantly, we talk about the feel and the philosophy of it. I know, Elise, you're talking about the binder. We do have this magical binder that's mm -hmm. comprehensive. But I don't know if you remembered when we um, went through our group leader yeah. training, I didn't spend a ton of time in the binder. Yeah. I, tried to, I tried to facilitate spaces where people could connect and talk with each other mm -hmm. and then uh, go back into their own personal experience uh, and practice active listening, yeah. a lot of empathy, and I tried to encourage our group leaders to, to trust their own intuition, just like how we do with our moms, and to really be comfortable with who you are as mm -hmm. a person, mm -hmm. and to acknowledge that you are growing and learning as well, just yeah. like your parents. Um, and I think it's, I, I, I learn something new every time that I'm a group leader, and it is so humbling. Yeah, so I would encourage it for anyone. If you love babies, if you, uh, if you believe in relationships and connection and community and um, get, uh, serving others or just contributing, it feels, yeah. I don't know. It's also like a research-proven happiness um, yeah. practice, mm -hmm. but just giving. Yeah. Um, I would say please, please uh, sign up to be a group leader. That's fantastic. You will not regret it. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, we're just about out of time, so I wanted to encourage anyone watching, if they're interested in signing up for Pico Pals, to visit Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies at hmhb-hawaii.org or search online for Pico Pals to join a group. Um, Elise and Liana, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for, Thanks for everyone who's tuned in today. And I'll see you next time on Family Affairs on ThinkTech Hawaii.